Konami recently unleashed a fire hose of Silent Hill news. It's the first time they've spoken about the series in, well, a long time, but the news is encouraging. We're getting a new movie, two new spin-offs, including one by the developers of Stories Untold, which I am personally very excited for, a shiny new remake of Silent Hill 2 by Bloober Team, who developed this masterpiece, and the first new mainline Silent Hill game announced in, well, a long time. Of course, it's wonderful to see the series shake off the cobwebs and strut around with a beautiful and spooky new coat of paint. But something about this spate of announcements feels a little hollow to me. Like the shadow of something much greater looms over them. Eh, who the hell knows what that could be, though. Incidentally, like totally unrelated, uh, the eight-year anniversary of the announcement of Silent Hills just passed a few months ago. And if the fond discussion around it was any indication, Silent Hills is the best game that never was. Probably? Truth be told, we just don't know that much about the scrapped Silent Hills. We don't know anything about its narrative, or its connection to the Silent Hill canon, or even when it was supposed to be released. And as I'm sure you're aware, and as we're about to discuss, the game's publisher, Konami, mothballed the project mere months after its announcement. All we know about the game now can be gleaned from its only documented piece of marketing. The playable teaser. PT was a first-person horror game ostensibly developed by 7780S Studio, a pseudonym for Kojima Productions, and released for the PlayStation 4 in August of 2014. We should note that Hideo Kojima himself has stated that the teaser wasn't a demo, that it was its own standalone thing and not just an excerpt from the larger Silent Hills. But it's likely that it had some connections to the game it revealed. Perhaps they shared mechanics, or visuals, or themes, or more than likely, some combination of the three. Given those probable shared threads, and the fact that PT is all that remains of Silent Hills in the popular consciousness, Putting the teaser under a microscope might help us answer the question, what is Silent Hills? The entirety of PT takes place in a single, photorealistic, painting-lined, L-shaped hallway. Off to your right sits a clock that reads 2359, which is 11.59pm for my fellow non-military American viewers. Further ahead and to the left is a desk holding up a landline phone and several family photos. Turning to the right, you'll find a door, closed at first, but hiding a bathroom. Just beyond is a freestanding cabinet and a radio, bathed in the pale light of a chandelier hanging above the front door and watched from above by a shadowed mezzanine. And finally, at the end of the hallway, stands another door. It might seem silly to describe the hallway in such detail, but in many ways, PT is the hallway. The core gameplay loop is an actual physical loop. You walk through the door at the end of the hall and reappear at the start of that same hallway, solving obtuse puzzles and getting harassed by a ghost along the way. You do this so many times that you build a mental map of the place as if it were your own. The tiny changes that each loop brings, the yellowing of wallpaper or the fading of photos, almost glow like white-hot lead, and bear with them a comparable narrative weight. This is true even in the face of bigger, more outright terrifying changes, like pounding on the bathroom door or a refrigerator swinging where the chandelier should be. In PT, familiarity breeds madness. Of course, this is true from a gameplay perspective, each loop brings another scare, adds another instrument to the game's symphony of terror. But it seems to be true from a story perspective as well. The father in the radio broadcast seems to have followed his routine day in and day out until one day he snapped, murdering his entire family. Much of PT is and forever will be open to interpretation. But I like to think of our looping through the hallway as reflective of what the father must have felt in the weeks and months leading up to his familicide. We might be witnessing it as some traumatic, otherworld manifestation of the father's shattered psyche. 
this would certainly fall in line with the events of other Silent Hill games. Or we might be witnessing it as some kind of retributive torture inflicted by Lisa, the familicidal father's presumed wife, upon any male figure that walks into the house. As a ghost, she might be cursed to feel the same overwhelming fear, anger, and betrayal that she felt towards her husband in her final moments. And she might be cursed to lash out at those emotions until the end of time. What better way to do that than to make him relive those maddening final days over and over and over again? What better way to do that than to craft for him a perfect little slice of hell? I don't have much more to say about the game that others haven't said already. Critics have lauded its visuals and tension-building techniques, fans have long since pieced together and fawned over its complex story, and programmers have deconstructed every single one and zero in its code to find out what makes it tick. You've likely read those articles, trolled through those threads, and watched those dissection videos. Since PT entered the canon of horror games almost immediately after its release, there's not much more that this humble video essays can offer you eight years out. I can, however, explain that part of the reason for the game's swift and glorious ascension into the pantheon of horror games was its secret. Of course, we now know that PT's true name is Playable Teaser, and that it heralded the arrival of a new Silent Hill game. We know now that this Silent Hills was spearheaded by Hideo Kojima, the legendary game auteur, and Guillermo del Toro, the award-winning Hollywood writer-director, and that it starred Norman Reedus, the guy who played Daryl on The Walking Dead. But at the time, it took hours of obtuse puzzling to peel back the mask of this random, unreasonably polished indie horror game. Its true identity was an almost biblical revelation. For weeks, the news of this unlikely creative synthesis electrified social media. The atmosphere at the time would have you believe that Silent Hills was going to be the single most revolutionary thing that had happened to horror games, or games, or just horror since, like, I don't know, Nosferatu? All that jubilation was met with silence from Konami, however. And on April 27th, 2015, eight months after the teaser's monumental release, the company announced that Silent Hills had been cancelled. Two days later, P.T. was quietly dragged off the PlayStation Store and unceremoniously vaporized. New players could no longer download a fresh copy of the game, and old players could no longer re-download the game after they'd uninstalled it. Just like that, Silent Hills became a ghost that haunted gaming's collective consciousness. A few people have tried to remedy Konami's crime against the art form. As early as 2014, the first publicly available recreation of P.T. hit the scene in a game called Project Spark. If you haven't heard of Project Spark, then join the club. It was a short-lived game creation platform for the Xbox One that existed from 2014 to 2016. Think of it as sort of a spiritual successor to Microsoft 3D Movie Maker. Rats! We're rats! We're the rats! And a predecessor to Dreams. Oh my god! Ah! Players were given a limited, though large I'm sure, toy box of assets and scripts and asked to go nuts with them. And to go nuts, RT did. Project Spark's limited toolset takes center stage in this recreation of PT, though it does an admirable job of bringing the vibe of its muse to life. The famous hallway is clearly there in all of its spiraling recursive glory. They even managed to recreate a few of the puzzles, and that one particularly tense segment in which you peer through a hole in the wall of the bathroom. Ultimately though, Project Spark's graphical and technical limitations hamper its effectiveness as a horror experience. Take Lisa, for example. Her mutilated and decaying visage, realistically rendered in the original PT, evokes a fear of the uncanny, of body horror, and of, well, of getting mauled by a ghost. Her counterpart from RT, however, which is no more than an animatronic from Spirit Halloween in a static cartoon dungeon, elicits none of those fears. 
Though the developer clearly tried to approximate the tense, horrifying atmosphere of P.T., all they managed to do is reveal how effective P.T.'s photorealistic art direction is at creating tension. Part of me does think that R.T. was meant as a parody of P.T., though. Now, I don't mean a parody of the playable teaser as a horror game, I mean a parody of the playable teaser as a marketing stunt. Because, let's not forget, P.T. was intended as a piece of marketing for Silent Hills, a way to generate hype for and discussion about a freshly revealed game, and nothing quite like it had ever happened in video games before. Sure, studios used ARGs to promote games or new game content in the past, but they'd never developed an entirely separate, finely crafted game as promotional material before. To laymen and industry insiders alike, it seemed like entirely too much money and effort for what amounted to a marketing gimmick. And right from its announcement trailer, RT also treats itself like a marketing gimmick. The shots of gameplay get intercut with night vision camera footage of Nicolas Cage screaming and sobbing, as though he were terrified of what he was playing. This might seem random at first, just a piece of 2014-era meme humor unfairly dredged into the modern age. <laughs> but us old heads will recognize the bizarre trailer for what it is, a parody of the live audience reaction marketing campaign used to promote the original Paranormal Activity movie back in the late 2000s. Having already taken aim at one of the most memorable horror marketing campaigns of the decade, it would follow that RT would set its sights on another. Cause, see, RT was itself a playable teaser, of sorts. You descend the stairs at the end of the hallway into a ruined throne room. After displaying some vague text narration, the game reveals its own Silent Hills title drop moment for a then upcoming Conquer fan game. Now, I have no idea if this fan game was ever actually released, but for our purposes, I don't think it matters. Going through all of that puzzling, all those scares, just to see the title drop of some completely unrelated and unreleased game? It's preposterous, just as it was in P.T. And in hindsight, the developer of R.T. was fully justified in poking fun at the concept of P.T. as a marketing tool. Because, in the end, after all the talent and money poured into the playable teaser, and after the incalculable amount of hype it generated, Konami just cancelled it. P.T. was a gamble that almost certainly would have paid off when Silent Hills released, but Konami didn't want it to. I don't think it gets discussed much, but P.T. might just be one of the biggest marketing fumbles in video game history. But anyway, back to the recreations. You probably won't be surprised to learn that P.T. met the fate of all other games and was recreated in Minecraft. In April of 2015, just days before the teaser was delisted, the map maker and YouTuber Doodlecraft uploaded PT Silent Hill's horror map to Planet Minecraft, where it accrued tens of thousands of downloads and sizable YouTube coverage. The map is as faithful a recreation of PT as anything written on 3444 command blocks could be. At a glance, the map looks right, you can make out the hallway and many of its intricacies. The photos on the wall, the desk in the corner, the radio near the front door, the dim ceiling lights. The map even manages to sneak in a few fun, subtle changes with each loop, just like the real PT. Minecraft's limitations do force a few creative liberties, though. You're looking at the fetus in the sink right now, for example. And this is the paper bag. And this is the swinging fridge, and really I could just keep doing this bit for every object in the hallway because it's fucking Minecraft, it's, it's, uh, it's all blocky. All of that, with the inclusion of original audio files from the game and clever manipulation of Minecraft's default sounds, elevates the map from a little Lego diorama of PT to something that actually manages to capture the feeling of the game. Later recreations of P.T. took the lessons of both the Minecraft map and R.T. though, and opted to take a much more faithful approach to recreation. In 2018, for example, a 17-year-old developer named Kim Sar released what appears to have been a shot-for-shot -shot remake of P.T. for PC. Say that five times fast. 
For a moment, players could re-experience, or experience for the first time, some semblance of Kojima's seminal horror game. Nine days later, Konami's legal team shut the project down and had it removed. A year later, in 2019, developer Radius Gordello released yet another faithful remake of PT for PC. Called Unreal PT for its use of the Unreal 4 engine, this remake of PT was so wholly faithful that it utilized most of PT's original assets. Unreal PT even sought to expand on its predecessor's scares by introducing VR support. In what was quickly becoming a familiar beat, however, the remake was removed from itch.io only a few weeks later. This time, however, the developer cited a busy personal life for the removal, though I'm sure the looming threat of Konami's legal goon squad colored their decision to remove the game instead of simply suspending support for it. I know I've been heaping praise on these two faithful recreations, but they aren't without their flaws. The lighting doesn't quite match up, some of the models look different, and the pacing and content of some events has been changed. Like in Unreal PT, when you first peer into that bathroom door, Lisa doesn't pop up to slam it in your face. Lisa's appearance here in the original PT is such a minor detail, I know, but it really does add to the context and narrative of the original PT. All of these remakes have their flaws, their deviations. They're translations of PT, and something invariably gets lost in translation. It should be noted that of our four translations, only the Minecraft map remains legitimately playable. The Project Spark recreation was never stricken down by Konami or anything, but Project Spark itself was shuttered back in 2016. None of its user-created games are playable now and neither are our two faithful recreations. Each only existed for a short time before external factors removed them from download pages, burying their existence. I've explored the topic of video game preservation at large in another video, so I won't dive in too deeply here. I will put one of those little card things up in the corner so you can watch it if you'd like. Anyway, Soon after PT's removal, it became clear that if you never played one of the greatest horror games of all time, you were never going to. And I never have, for the record. I've played every game that I've talked about on this channel except for PT. I didn't have a PS4 at the time of its release, and I don't exactly have a thousand schmackers to shell out on a special PS4 now. I want to take a moment to reiterate what I just said. The only 100% legal way to play PT one of the most influential horror games of all time is either to already own an 8-year-old PS4 that you never uninstalled PT from, or to buy such a PS4 for upwards of 1,000 US dollars. It should come as no surprise, then, that the playable teaser became something of a rallying cry for the cause of modern game preservation, almost overnight. Here was this modern classic gagged, bound, and unceremoniously tossed into the abyss like a bag of bricks. Seemingly on a whim, Konami simply deleted a piece of gaming history, doing everything in their power to ensure that no one ever legally played it again. We know, of course, that when fans set to rebuilding the game from the ground up, Konami threatened legal action to shut them down. And when Sony allowed PS4 games to be transferred onto new PS5s, Konami stepped in to guarantee that that same luxury would not be afforded to the playable teaser. By the time of PT's initial removal, it wasn't the only case of some big publisher nuking the legal playable presence of a game. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World had been removed by Ubisoft and or WB over a rights dispute just a few months prior. But it was the most high-profile case since Atari buried all remaining copies of its disastrous E.T. game in the desert back in 1983. This has always happened to fucking lie, do you get it? But, you know, Scott Pilgrim was a cult game and E.T. was old and bad. P.T., on the other hand, was wildly popular and critically acclaimed. People realized that if Konami could erase all legal pathways to a game this beloved and influential, squashing any attempts to rebuild what was lost, then other massive, profit-seeking corporations could do the same thing to their favorite games. 
Never before in living gamer memory had there been such a clear example of the dangers that total corporate control posed over the preservation of the medium. Even today, eight years later, PT is remembered as almost a kind of martyr for game preservation. It's the go-to worst-case scenario example of what happens when corporate entities have full control over the preservation of their medium. They can just remove games from download for any reason. And because they want total dominion over their IPs, and any of the money or eyeballs that their IPs can attract, they'll strangle any community attempts to salvage what was lost. As long as corporations hold all the cards on the issue of video game preservation, the medium is doomed to be swept away by the sands of time. Now, as we've established, Konami's deletion of PT was stupid and pointless. A tragedy, if something with literally zero material stakes can be considered one. But, and here comes the most controversial statement of this video, getting cancelled might have been the best thing that could have ever happened to Silent Hills. Now don't get mad at me, okay? Norman Reedus said it first, you go get mad at him. Of course, he was referring to how Silent Hill's absence allowed for him, Hideo Kojima, and Guillermo del Toro to grow closer as creative collaborators, which led to the creation of Death Stranding. Love it or hate it, I haven't played it, it seems like the game allowed a lot of ideas in Silent Hills to mature. The aforementioned creative collaboration being one such idea, of course, but also the themes of American social ills and familial trauma. Hell, even the weird fixation on fetuses seems to have reached its final form. What survived from Silent Hills into Death Stranding is very particular to Kojima and his collaborators. And given that the game was cancelled, we'll never know just how much of the former survived into the latter. But what survived from Silent Hills into the collective consciousness of gaming has been all-encompassing. Echoes of P.T. and the promised Silent Hills can be found everywhere in horror games, from the most underground itch.io fair to a few of the most exalted AAA horror games of the past generation. Channel alumni Anatomy is one such child of P.T. The game has you tread and retread the halls of a suburban home, its geometry growing ever familiar and ever more decayed with each loop until you're swimming through blood-red lights and fleshy growths, a structure that should look familiar by now. Like P.T., the game uses the rough texture of analog voice recordings to fill the house with a sense of offness, and to allude to the horrible history that haunts its otherwise unimpressive suburban home. Anatomy even pulls the fake crash trick to make you feel like whatever is haunting the house is haunting the game and that it's taken control of your system to make sure that you don't see anything you're not supposed to. You can almost feel P.T.'s dark influence on this game. But like I said, Anatomy stands on its own. Its focus lies not with any former resident of the house that refuses to leave, but with the tormented depths of emotion felt by a house whose residents have refused to return. It asks, in so many words, what if the house itself was haunted, and looks to P.T. for help in answering? Visage, another child of P.T. and an indie horror darling, also stands on its own. But right from its initial pitch on Steam Greenlight in 2016, players were drawing comparisons to P.T. With its photorealistic graphics, its environmental puzzles, its ghost lady standing under the dim lights of a tight suburban corridor, Visage had it all. And the developers have never shied away from the comparison. In fact, they wrote it themselves in the Steam Greenlight pitch, then doubled down in a 2017 IGN interview, and have stated that the removal of P.T. way back in 2015 motivated them to create their own Silent Hills. The full release of the game has only crystallized this fact. The house, though more than one hallway, invites comparisons to the quiet, 80s decorated house in P.T. And even then, it might as well be one continuous hallway. The story is structured in such a way that you wind up looping through the halls of this bizarrely structured house, 
building an all too familiar mental map of the place as unraveling spirits further degrade it. Visage even bears the motif of fucked up fetuses in places where they shouldn't be, with an entire womb-like room devoted to a petrified baby. And, just one final note on Visage, I find it appropriate that Visage gives you an inventory and limited resources with which to find respite from the haunt. Survival horror mechanics like these have been crucial to the Silent Hill franchise ever since its inception, and it's likely that they would have made it into the full Silent Hills. In this one little way, Visage might be closer to the intended Silent Hills than PT ever was. The influence of the greatest horror game that never was has even reached the vaulted halls of AAA studios like Capcom. Early reviews of Resident Evil 7, for example, favorably compared its first-person, house-exploring gameplay to that of P.T.'s. While the gameplay is remarkably similar to P.T. in some sections, I'd argue that the playable teaser's influence can be felt even more strongly in the next Resident Evil release, Resident Evil Village. Though the game as a whole explores all the far-flung realms of horror, from vampires in gothic castles to Lovecraftian fish people in ramshackle swamps, undoubtedly the game's scariest segment takes place in the cramped halls of a small, haunted country manor. As you stumble around in the dark, solving puzzles related to familial trauma, you'll come face to face with the apex of the fucked up fetus where it shouldn't be motif. I am, of course, talking about the part with the giant baby in it. This humongous, fleshy monstrosity makes Resident Evil Village's connections to P.T. feel quite literally larger than life, as its manic, tinny giggling fills the tiny hallway behind you, threatening to gobble you up. The image of this animated fetus in a darkened home, the analog filtered voice it emits, and the fact that the only way to escape it is to be familiar enough with the tight, dimly lit hallways of the basement to juke it out just screams P.T. By comparing these games to P.T., I don't mean to imply that developers are just remaking P.T. over and over again. I don't even mean to imply that developers are just repeatedly making the game they imagined Silent Hills would be over and over again. I only wish to demonstrate how these modern horror games keep it alive, in a sense, by drawing out threads of ideas and knitting them into their own creations. In so few words, Silent Hills, or the ephemera around it, stick around by providing some of the DNA for many modern horror games. So. After all that exploration and all those tangents, what is Silent Hills? It was a cancelled game, obviously, one whose publishers only afforded it a shot at existence through a teaser, which was itself a flash in the pan that existed for a mere eight months. But the promise of that teaser, and of the creative forces behind it, excited players. So much so that when the teaser was removed, they kept remaking what they'd lost even in the face of legal threats. The deletion of P.T. and the abortion of Silent Hills became rallying cries in the struggle for video game preservation. But, perhaps more than all of that, Silent Hills is an idea, latched on to the minds of everyone who came into contact with it back in 2015. Its tendrils still spill out of those minds from time to time. They unfurl themselves, and take root in horror games at every level of the industry, imparting with them their fascinatingly frightful ideas of aesthetics, themes, and mechanics. In so few words, Silent Hills is its own modern myth, the myth of the best game that never was, and it will be retold and reimagined for years to come. <laughs>